Hello, in this UNM CARC Quick Byte tutorial, we're going to look at how to submit PBS batch jobs so that we can run compute jobs on um, the Wheeler High Performance Computing Center cluster. The first thing we want to do is SSH into um, Wheeler's head node. If you're not familiar with how to access CARC systems, take a look at the logging into CARC Quick Byte tutorial uh, on this website. All right, so we're going to go to Wheeler. And I'm now logged into what's called the head node. Let's take a minute to talk about the structure of a high performance computing center cluster. Um, they consist of one or more head nodes where you log in. That's where you can um, look at your files, where you can compile programs, where you can edit programs with, pro with editors like Emacs, uh, whatever you'd like to use. It's for um, tasks that are not computationally intensive. The cluster, uh, in addition to the one or more head nodes, will have many compute nodes. Those compute nodes are dedicated to computation. So um, on Wheeler, there are, uh, if I type the command qgrok, See that there are currently um, 300 compute nodes with a total of 2,400 cores available for computation. And we've divided those um, nodes up into two parts. There is the default queue where um, you can submit jobs that are regular compute jobs. And there's a debug queue. This debug queue is used for um, running code to see that's in development to see if it's working correctly um, before you're ready to run it on the default queue. <clears throat> so one of the things you'll notice is that there are 34 free nodes right now. That means there are 34 compute nodes that you can use for running your jobs. Um, each of these compute nodes on Wheeler has eight CPUs and 48 gigabytes of RAM. So each of these compute nodes is already um, has more resources than a typical laptop or desktop, but you get to use many of them all together. For this tutorial, um, we're going to load some files that I've already prepared um, to save on, on typing. Um, so we're going to type the following command. I'm going to type git clone. Um, so this is a, uh, a tool for storing software um, in a central location, so we can just pull that software and take a look at it and look at some of the things you'll need to do. All right, so it's going to be HTTPS, um, global git, that's UNM's git repository, unm.edu, carsey, workshops.git. All right, so when you um, r run that command, it'll create a new directory called workshops. I already have that directory here. <coughs> and inside that directory um, is the intro to intro workshop here, which has several pieces. It has some programs for us to run as examples. Of course, you'll run your own um, programs that you're interested in for your research. But just for examples, we have um, two Python programs. All they do is calculate pi. We have a data directory that um, has data that we might use for our programs. And we have a PBS directory. This PBS directory contains examples of PBS scripts that you'll be using to submit jobs on Wheeler. PBS stands for Portable Batch Script. If you've ever done any shell programming, you'll see that these PBS scripts are really just shell scripts. All right, we'll get into that in a minute here. But first, let's just talk about um, how you access the compute nodes you'd like to run your jobs on. So as I said before, we're on the Wheeler head node. Uh, it works the same for the Xena cluster, the Taos cluster. 
Um, so the head node is where you log in. To get access to a compute node, I'm going to type Q sub, that stands for Q submission. I'm going to type dash I for interactive. And I'm going to hit enter. And this submits a request to the job scheduler for a compute node. I've been assigned a compute node now. I've been assigned Wheeler 278. So it's one of those 300 nodes that I showed you a second ago. And I now have exclusive access to this compute node. Um, nothing else is running on it. I can check that by running top here. And I can see that nothing else is running. <clears throat> and I can now run, out, run whatever programs I want. So in previous tutorials, I've shown you how to uh, load things like um, the R environment. And now I have access to R. You should never run um, R or MATLAB or any computationally intensive program on the head node, only on compute nodes. Now I'm showing you um, how to access compute nodes here in interactive mode. That means you can type in commands and get responses back immediately, just like you were logged in to um, uh, the head node, or just like you were sitting in front of this computer on your on your own desktop. Uh, you should do this when you're debugging your code, when you're entering commands to see if they will work um, properly on the compute node you're interested in. But typically, you do not run computations this way. Typically, we write um, scripts, PBS scripts, and those PBS scripts just contain the commands that we are going to run to do our computation, uh, and then we can submit those scripts to um, the scheduler, and they can run later on and then send us the results uh, via email, let us know when they finish by email. And the reason for that, um, I'll make obvious here, so if I type qstat, that shows other people running on the Wheeler system. And you can see there are lots of other people running on this system. We're fortunate that right now we have 40 free nodes. Uh, but sometimes Wheeler is full. Sometimes there are no free nodes available at all. But we still like to run our, our, our jobs. And the way we do that is by adding our job to the scheduler. And the scheduler will run our commands that we put into a batch script for us whenever a node becomes free. So we can submit our job at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and maybe a node becomes free at midnight. Our computation will start then, run until it's complete, and then I'll receive an email saying, your job is complete. You can check the results. But qsub-i will um, give you access to uh, a node interactively for debugging um, if one is available. All right, so let's take a look at a script for requesting um, the scheduler run a job later. So let's go into the workshop directory. So let's take a look at um, the workshop examples. All right. So this is just a text file. Um, as I said before, if you're familiar with uh, shell scripting, it'll uh, look kind of familiar. Uh, even if you're not, it's fairly simple. The first line um, just tells the system that this is a script to run the script. And then we have several lines that start with pound PBS, and then some lines that don't start with anything at the beginning. All right, so let's go over these PBS directives first. So PBS is the name of the scheduler that will decide when your job is available to run. The first line um, specifies what queue to run on. So before we looked at the default queue and the debug queue. In this case, we're going to run it on the default queue. And then we're going to ask for resources. So the job of the scheduler is to give us resources that we ask for. So maybe we ask for 40 compute nodes so that we can run our code 40 times faster than we would on one compute node. 
Um, in this example, we're just going to ask for two compute nodes, so two computers, each of which is going to have eight cores. So we're going to ask for eight cores on two nodes. We could ask for one core on two nodes if we like, um, but in this case, we're going to ask for two compute nodes and eight cores on each of those. Then we're going to specify the amount of wall time that we want. So wall time is specified in uh, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So in this case, we're going to ask for five minutes of time. And that's how much time we are requesting on the cluster. So if I request five minutes, um, the scheduler will try and find five minutes of time for me on two nodes. And then I'll be able to run my program for five minutes. After five minutes, I lose access to those nodes. And whatever I was running stops. So you want to make sure that you always request enough wall time to complete your job. There are limits on um, how much time you can request. So Wheeler is one of our community, uh, community clusters that many people can use for free. Um, and we want to make sure that the resources are shared fairly. So the maximum amount of time that you can request on Wheeler is 48 hours. So make sure that your job either completes within 48 hours or that your job is capable of picking up where it left off after it gets stopped so the next time it gets a chunk of time allocated to it it can keep on running. The dash n command here um, specifies the name of the job that is running and I'll show you what that means in a second. This dash j takes the output, the, the standard output and the error output and saves them to one file. So since we're running this as a script, you won't be sitting in front of the terminal watching it run. Um, it's going to run maybe when you're not there, and it's going to email you when it's done. And we want to tell it to save the output, that is, whatever would have been written to screen that you would have been reading had you been sitting in front of the, in front of the machine. It's going to save that output to a file so that you can look at that file once the job is done. And that file will contain information about um, the compute nodes that the job ran on, how long it ran for, if there were any error messages that you should look at. Next, we have two dash M arguments, a lowercase m and a capital M. The uppercase M specifies where to email um, notices about your job. So if I want to know when the job starts or finishes or if it, if it um, crashed for some reason, I specify the email address here. And the small m specifies what kind of notices we want to receive. So B stands for begin, so I get an email when the job begins. A stands for abort, so if the job ended um, for some unusual reason, like it crashed, there'll be an abort message. And E for if the job ended normally. So that means the program just finished, you ran out of time, uh, it ends normally and emails you to tell you that. So this section is just about talking to the scheduler asking for resources, setting up where you want to receive information, um, and things like the name of your job. Everything that comes after that uh, is a regular script, a regular shell script. And a shell script is just where you could enter whatever commands you would normally enter uh, in the terminal. You can write them down here, one after the other, and it will execute them um, for you. So these commands will get executed for you when you get allocated your compute nodes. Uh, which enables you to put in all the commands that you, you would want to get your, your job running. So for example, in this really simple case, we're just going to use the echo command that just prints something, and we're going to echo the name of the compute node that we're running on. But normally, of course, this would have something like MATLAB in the name of a MATLAB program, or R in the name of an R program, and then, or you know, some other piece of software like um, Molpro or Gaussian or Orca, anything you want to run here, you would type the commands uh, in this script right here. All right, so we have this very simple example script. Let's go ahead and run it. So the way we do that is, remember we had Q sub dash I previously for interactive. We're going to re remove the dash i, and so we're going to submit this PBS script. So all we have to do is type q sub and the name of the script that we want to run. Hit enter. 
we immediately get back a job ID. This is the identifier for the job that will be scheduled. Now, um, if I type QGRUCK again, oops, we see there are plenty of nodes free. This is a very simple job, so it will already have completed. This file you see is named the same as the name of the job. So let's take a look at the um, that script again that we just wrote. We looked at. You see it says print host name here. And now we have an output file, a new file called print host name. So all the output files will be named the same as the job, followed by the identifier of that particular job. So if I ran it over and over and over again, this number would change and I'd get different output for each time I ran the, um, I submitted this computational job. All right, so I'm going to type cat here, which is just a way of visualizing text files, and the name of the output file, and here's what it contains. So this section here is the preamble. This gives me information about the job. So it tells me the job ID. It tells me um, what nodes it was running on. So in this case, we we're on nodes 219 and 217. And then um, that's the end of the prologue. This script was running on Wheeler 219. And then here's the actual output of that last command we had. So remember we had um, Let's take a look at that. We had echo hostname. The output of echo hostname is just Wheeler 219. All it does is print the name of the compute node it was running on. And then that's the end of our output. Now, keep in mind that for whatever program you're running, it may have its own output files that could be written. This is just what would have appeared on your screen had you been running interactively. All right, so let's take a minute to um, review a little more formally the, um, the idea of how these, these clusters are set up. Uh, and I said before, we're using PBS. So PBS is um, the Torque system. So Torque and MAUI are the schedulers we're using on the Wheeler system. There's another scheduling system called Slurm that we use on Taos. And I will post uh, another video on how to schedule jobs with Slurm. All right, so as I said previously, uh, here is a visualization of the head node. So the head node is where we might have our programs, where we can write our scripts. And then we have a number of compute nodes where we actually run those programs. All right, so in this example, since there will be many users logged into the same head node any one time, um, user one wants to run program A, user two wants to run program B. User one will write a PBS script that calls program A and user2 has a PBS script that calls their program B. Uh, we have shared file systems, so all the compute nodes can see exactly the same files as are on the head node. So you don't need to worry about copying data back and forth or copying programs back and forth. They're all accessible um, from everywhere. All right, so these scripts are submitted to the scheduler with QSub, as you've seen already a couple of times. And the scheduler decides what compute nodes those jobs are going to run on, depending on what compute nodes are free, um, how long of a time has been requested. So the longer you request, um, the harder it'll be for the scheduler to find time on a compute node. And of course, the more nodes you request, the harder it'll, time it'll be for it to find um, an open slot for you. The trade-off is, though, that once you do get scheduled, if you've asked for a long time on a lot of nodes, you'll have um, that much more resources to use. All right. So the scheduler then runs script A on the first compute node allocated to user 1. And it'll run script B on the first compute node allocated to user 2. Now notice it's not running these scripts on all the compute nodes. It's only running these scripts on the first compute node that was allocated. So we have to find some way, and there are lots of tools that we'll go over, of running these programs on all of the compute nodes we were given. Um, MPI is one way of doing it. 
the new parallel is another. There are lots of tools, as I say, that we can go through and use to, to put these programs and start them running on these compute nodes and so we can set them up to communicate with each other and get results. Now, it may be that with your particular program, that's all taken care of for you. Maybe you're using, um, for example, Orca um, for molecular dynamics. Um, that's all taken care of for you under the hood. If you're writing your own software, you'll have to worry more about how to set up um, using many nodes at once. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of um, a real piece of software um, being run as a job on the compute nodes. So we have an example here of Gaussian. Gaussian um, is a commercial product for analyzing um, molecular dynamics. Let's take a look at what that PBS script looks like. All right, so this all looks familiar to you now. We have the default queue. We're going to ask for two nodes, eight cores, wall time of five minutes. I'm going to give it a name. So in this particular uh, run, it's going to analyze um, uh, a water molecule. We specify the email address. Of course, you want to put in your own email address here. And then we're going to have the rest of the file be this script of commands. So if you're not familiar with shell scripting, that's OK. Um, if you are, you'll recognize that here we're just setting a variable. The variable input molecule is equal to the path to the input file for this particular program. And we're using another variable called PBSO Workter. And you'll see PBSO Workter all over the place in these PBS scripts. It's a variable that contains the path to wherever you started the script from. So in this example, we're going to start it um, right above the data directory so that when the program runs, it knows where to find its input file. And then we specify a find output file, uh, again using PBSO Workter so that it writes a file in the same directory from where we ran QSub. Then we module load Gaussian. Um, and if you're not familiar with uh, environment modules, take a look at a previous video, previous quick bite tutorial where I discuss how to load um, modules. Once we've done that, we get access to this geo9 Gaussian um, command, which then reads the input variable, that is, it looks for the path to this water molecule, and then writes the output to h2o.log. I just want to emphasize that even though the examples we've looked at so far have requested two computational nodes with eight cores each, so a total of 16 cores, we haven't done anything yet to take advantage of all those cores. We're only running um, software on the first of the nodes we're allocated. We'll have to do a little bit more work that we'll cover in future Quick Byte um, tutorials on how to allocate uh, our programs to all those compute nodes that we were given. So we'll look at GNU Parallel, which is an easy way of doing it, and also uh, OpenMPI and MPish that allow us to do that if we're writing our own software. And even for this example with Gaussian, we're going to have to give it a little bit more information um, before it's able to use all those cores that we've been allocated and really take advantage of the resources that are available. All right. So. I have to be careful about where I run this from um, because the data file is in this subdirectory data. There it is, h2o gjf. We can take a look at that. And again, this is, you know, probably very few of you are actually running Gaussian, but this is just an example of how you'd run something um, using this script. Your programs, of course, will be different. All right, so here's the definition of this water molecule. I'm going to go um, to this directory so that when I run the program, we can find that water molecule. And let's go ahead and bring up the script just so uh, you can see what's going on. Oops, the script is actually in PBS Calcium. There it is. And I will say QSub PBS Gaussian. All right, that job has been submitted. I can type QSTAT 
to see that my job has been submitted. It's running. And let's type it again. It looks like it's still running. And I can actually use the command watch. That just repeatedly calls a command so I can um, look at what's going on without having to type it over and over. And it looks like that job is finished. And I know that it's finished because here is the um, output file we talked about earlier that shows whatever's printed on the terminal. And here is the h2o.log file that we specified as the output. So let's take a look at the output file first to see if there were any errors or warning messages. Here's the um, preamble that we looked at before. And there's no output at all, which I'll take as a good sign. Hopefully there's no error messages. And now let's take a look at the um, H2O log. And yes, we get output from Gaussian uh, showing that it processed that water molecule and determined um, how to optimize the positions of the relative atoms. OK, so I just modified that script so they have my email address and um, submitted it. And I received a email um, letting me know that the job had finished and telling me exactly where the output could be found. I also received an email showing um, when the job started. So even though it says terminated here, uh, that's a normal exit. Um, terminated just means that the job finished. All right, so that's an introduction on how to run um, PBS jobs at Carsey, how to use the compute nodes. In future videos, I will go over how to use MPI and how to use GNU Parallel to make sure that your jobs are running on all the um, compute nodes that you request. All right. I hope to see you later. Bye-bye.